The Denver Broncos held their end of season press conference today and there are some things that we did get a clear answer on and there are other things that we did not get such a clear answer on. Today, we heard from not only Broncos owner and CEO Greg Penner and head coach Sean Payton, we also heard from general manager George Payton and that's the first thing that we can really take away from this is that George Payton will indeed be the Broncos general manager for the 2024 season. He would have already been gone if that weren't the case. He would not have participated in this press conference so that is the first bit of news that we can officially answer right off the bat yes George Payton will be the Denver Broncos general manager in the 2024 season and right off the bat there was some some speculation regarding George Payton not having a good working relationship with Sean Payton that was basically put to bed in this press conference both by Sean Payton as well as Greg Penner. Sean said listen we've had a real good working relationship from the beginning referring to him and George Payton. Um, all of this has gone well. Again, we communicate two, three, four times a day. So yeah, that's gone really well. And then Greg Penner basically echoed the same thing. I thought it worked really well, especially the partnership between Sean and George. The relationship between head coach and GM is critical. I was impressed with the way they handled that going from free agency to the draft. It was great to see a number of young players that George and, and his staff had drafted previously step up and play critical roles. Talking, of course, to, um, to players such as Pat Sertan, Nick Benito, those kind of guys who were the younger guys that George Payton brought in through the draft that have made a significant impact on this Denver Broncos team. So... The thought was there was improvement this year, and I think George can help us build a winning roster here. So that tells us pretty much everything we need to know as far as George Payton's future here in Denver. As far as the message that pretty much both Payton as well as Greg Penner echoed in this presser, it was that although the Broncos did have a comparatively good year, they had some good things happen this year from the five-game winning streak, obviously, getting to beat the Kansas City Chiefs for the first time in the Patrick Mahomes era. At the end of the day, they were what their record was, and that was 8-9, and nine, another consecutive losing season, another consecutive season of no playoffs, and that's just not the identity that the Denver Broncos have held throughout the NFL historically, and it's not the identity that we want to start holding now. That was something that I feel like was echoed pretty much the entire way from Greg Penner, George Payton, and Sean Payton. They also said that the message for Broncos country is that they are just as impatient, impatient as we are to win here, and they understand that we have a lot of work to do this offseason to get better. George Payton was asked about how active the Broncos would be in free agency this year, given the fact that they do have a looming salary cap crunch, and Payton did indicate to the fact that the Broncos may not be as active in free agency as they have in, say, the previous two years, just because of that looming cap situation, and they really don't have the flexibility to do that this year. George Payton said that they will not have the flexibility to do that every single year, but that is one aspect of this team that I feel like is going to be sort of held back a little bit because of this Russell Wilson move to get his contract off the books. That was another thing that was talked about today is will Russell Wilson remain a Denver Bronco in 2024? The pretty clear indication is no, but Greg Penner and George Payton both basically kept an avenue open for the Broncos to bring back Russell Wilson, but that Avenue only really exists if Russell is willing to redo his deal, which he's already made very clear that he's not going to do. So that's the only chance that Russell Wilson still had to be a Bronco, despite what you may hear from the media today. Russell Wilson will not be a Denver Bronco in 2024. He will be released, and he will be released as a post June 1st designation, unless some team comes out and puts together a trade package for him, but I don't see that happening just because of Russell Wilson's financial situation. Right now, the Broncos are going to be in a situation where they're going to have to take a $35 million dead cap hit in 2024 and then a $49 million dead cap hit in 2025 to get this Russell Wilson contract off the books. George Payton also said that the decision to bench Russell Wilson was completely independent of the contract, which is, of course, what they have to say out loud. But we all know that the reality of the situation is the Broncos moved on from Russell Wilson to get that contract off the books. They benched him in order to not risk him having to get his injury guarantees to kick in, much like the Raiders did with Jimmy Garoppolo earlier in the year. The Broncos couldn't come out and say that part out loud because that would just open up a bunch of investigations by not only the NFL, but also the NFLP. But at the end of the day, 
although they can't really say it out loud, Russell Wilson is not going to be a Denver Bronco in 2024. So that's the next thing that we were able to take away from this here. Sean, Sean Payton then went on to say that his appetite is where it should be and is a little bit stronger than eight and nine. And I said at the start of this season in his little piece to USA Today, and it was really a discussion that was kind of off the record, but became on the record. I feel like we had a chance, our team had a chance to get into the postseason, and I feel the same way now. So I'm disappointed because of that, and disappointed that I look back on a handful of things I could have done differently and better, and so on and so forth. Now, make no mistake where we had finished. Our our record was what we could have been, was what it was, and we could have pointed to a few games that could have gone and got us to eight or nine or 10 wins or could have got us to nine or 10 wins. But we also could have pointed to a few games that got us to six wins really quickly as well. You think about some of the games that the Broncos were really lucky to scrape by by, you know, the Chicago game where we had the epic comeback in the second half. Then of course the Buffalo game where the Broncos literally should have lost that game. If it weren't for the 12 men penalty on that field goal attempt by the bills. So there were definitely a couple of games that you can point to that the Broncos should not have won and they should have in theory had two more losses on their record but you can then point to four games against an inferior opponent in the Raiders game the Commanders game the Jets game and the Patriots game where the Broncos should have won those games at home so at the end of the day man there are plenty of areas where Sean Payton can look in the mirror and try to do better heading into next season some of the Play calling heading into the third quarter, especially committing more to the run game. That's another area where this Broncos team needs to improve, where Sean Payton in particular needs to improve. But at the end of the day, this team made a lot of strides last year. We then think defensively, there was another question asked if the Broncos were going to make any changes to their staff. Sean Payton basically said that it was too early to really answer that question, but he didn't indicate that the Broncos are going to go in any other direction at defensive quarter coordinator most notably. I know Vance Joseph is sort of back on the hot seat with fan base with the fan base, but I'll say this Broncos country, a lot of the Broncos issues on defense especially in the final games of the season were personnel related. They don't have the sufficient amount of pieces that they need on their defensive line. They don't have a strong enough linebacking crew. And their second boundary corner spot with Fabian Moreau really was getting exposed over the last couple of weeks of the season. That's where the Broncos' defensive struggles really lie. It's not so much schematics with Vance Joseph. I understand that fans don't like how much soft zone coverage Vance Joseph plays, but... That's just the way of the NFL nowadays with a lot of these pass-happy leagues, with a lot of these pass-happy teams. I mean, they're just, you don't see a whole lot of man coverage happy coordinators anymore. And I'd argue during the five-game winning streak, Vance Joseph was one of the more happy man coverage happy coordinators in the NFL. He wasn't afraid to blitz. He wasn't afraid to be aggressive with his play calling. And that's something that really fell off over the last couple of weeks when the personnel really started to get exposed a little bit more. So I feel like this Broncos defense is going to look a lot different next year personnel-wise. They're going to make a lot of upgrades on the interior D-line. They're probably going to bring in another piece at edge rusher. They're definitely going to have a different number two boundary corner and then the safety spot is going to be a little bit interesting because PJ Locke is an impending free agent he has said that he does want to return to the Denver Broncos however the Broncos may be in a position where they might not be able to afford to pay PJ Locke so that's another area where this team is most likely going to have to make some changes so overall those are really the biggest things that we can take away from this presser is that although there is an avenue for Russell Wilson to be a Bronco next year it's a very slim one and it's most likely not going to happen we also learned that the Broncos are not likely to be very active in free agency at least the early wave of free agency they may depend on some more of like the lower end free agent signees in order to fill some of the holes on this roster in 2024 and that's the position that this team has found themselves in after having to take that dead cap hit moving on from Russell Wilson it's a tough situation but it's the bed that the Broncos made now they have to sleep in it. Then with Sean Payton, he's eager to finally get his guys in the building in order to finish establishing the culture that he's built here in Denver in year one. So those are really the 
big takeaways that I got out of this post this postseason presser from Sean Payton, from Greg Pinner, and from George Payton. And then obviously the most important tidbit here is that George Payton will be the Broncos GM in 2024 and most likely beyond because this was a point where the Broncos could move on and get Sean Payton, the GM that he really wants to work with heading into his tenure, heading into this tenure, being the Broncos head coach. And it feels like George Payton is that handpicked GM for jo- for Sean Payton. So those are the big takeaways, Broncos country. Let me know if there's anything else that you took away from these pressers. Drop those comments down below. I would love to hear your thoughts as always. Be sure to leave a like on this video as well as subscribe and ring the bell so these videos appear in your notification feed. I would really appreciate it, guys. Those are two free and easy ways to show your support. Helps tell YouTube's algorithm to push us out and helps us get seen by more and more members of Broncos country just like you and me. And until next time, guys, I'm your host, Gage. Madrid saying peace out.